more new cases around the world, an r naught that simply blows our mind, all of which means this is an unstoppable pandemic. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Martinson with your update today for COVID-19. It's February 13th, 2020. So let's get right to it. And uh, we're going to go right to the numbers here. So first up, China had this huge increase in the number of cases, which I'm sure you all heard about. And this was largely due to, they said, a uh, reclassification of what they were going to consider to be a known case. This would include cases that were not tested with a PCR test or something like that to give an absolute genetic confirmation, but the clinical case studies presented so nearly along the lines of what you'd expect to see with this coronavirus uh, contagion that uh, they lumped them in. So you see this huge death count jumped in. I think what's really important to notice here is that the total critical is still a very, very large number and still larger than the total recovered in this case. As well, we saw Japan with a death showing up here in this column. Very sad. Uh, We'll get to that in just a minute. Look at the details of that. And as well, we see this here in Singapore. We'll talk more about this right now. Total of 58 cases on the books right now, 15 recovered, and uh, eight critical. So again, this ratio here of critical to total cases is something we're going to want to take a look at a little bit more closely. And as well, the United States is starting to log, uh, had just a couple more cases came in. Take a peek at that. So in Singapore, now Singapore is really a very modern, very well-run country with just outstanding medical care and all of that. So here we want to look at this case where eight coronavirus patients in Singapore are in critical condition and the public should be prepared for people to succumb to the infection, health authorities said on Wednesday. So their health authorities are being, again, very forthright, very open about all of this. Not that many new cases, just three, but it's concerning to them now enough to say, hey, we think that people need to be mentally prepared, emotionally prepared for the idea that people will succumb to the infection. Now, um, these eight patients are, are in the intensive care unit with the best care possible. And uh, Singapore, again, very modern. I'm sure they're getting just exquisitely good care. But with all of that, still saying that Singapore should prepare for the worst. And um, the part that uh, I really want to draw your attention to here is in the headline above, authority said there was no discernible trend among the eight in critical condition. So to me, a discernible trend, I'm, I'm reading between the lines here, but maybe what they mean, I was looking for the stratifications in this so that we can understand who's most at risk here and whether that applies to us, obviously, selfishly. So uh, the age is important. The gender is important. The ethnicity seem to be important. All seem to be important at this time. So we don't have uh, that data, but reading between the lines, it says no discernible trend. That might mean all ages, all genders, things like that, which again, would be a little bit out of what we're reading into the data that is coming out of China and some of the early case studies that have come out. But uh, we're going to have to watch that and follow up on that carefully as time goes on. Uh, In the United States, we have the first case of coronavirus here identified in Texas, and um, it was among a group returning from China. Uh, That whole group is now quarantined in San Antonio. And uh, this is obviously on February 13th today, just a couple hours ago. So Uh, more cases are showing up. And what's interesting is I don't remember, I don't know exactly when this group returned from Hubei, but I believe it was a while ago. So uh, this is uh, fitting with a pattern where we're seeing people have the disease, but being asymptomatic, maybe even testing negative, and then some days later coming down with it. And then of course, the disease progression says that it's even some days after that, Uh, where things take a turn for the worse, potentially, if they're going to. So we'll see more of that in the data coming up. Uh, The floating sick bay, a.k.a. uh, the Diamond Princess cruise ship, uh, just seems so ill-fated. And uh, a friend of mine, he has a friend in Canada whose parents are on this ship, so uh, almost personal in a way. We have 44 new cases on that cruise ship, raising to 218 total. That's 6% of the entire ship now has been confirmed as having come down with this. We can see that all these people who are going on board the ship are going in in full uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. And uh, a doctor in Japan has just been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Uh, Not one of these people going into the ship. This is a doctor, I believe, if I have the story right, who um, was just exposed somewhere along the way. 
as well, um, we're seeing things like this uh, from uh, Dr. Erica Cretney. Dad just got diagnosed in the last couple hours with coronavirus on Diamond Princess. Tested and negative upon confinement, but now positive confinement isn't working. Of course it's not. And I, I don't, this situation just sounds horrible. The whole idea of being locked in a cabin, potentially one of the interior cabins where airflow is just dodgy at best and you don't know how good the filtration system is. But then your food is being brought to you. Who knows what the uh, sanitary conditions are down in uh, the galley. So that would be something that would be very concerning to me if I was on that ship was uh, not just being holed up with so much uncertainty, but being brought food uh, as well that I was uncertain of, particularly after we heard about that family of nine in Hong Kong all getting sickened after sharing a hot pot. So uh, maybe somehow this transmits through food uh, and the contact they're in. All right. Japan now is recording its first, all right, recording its first COVID-19 death. Three more domestic infection cases are now logged. This has nothing to do with that ship. This is a woman in her 80s infected with the new coronavirus died Thursday, becoming Japan's first confirmed fatality, first confirmed one. And uh, again, nothing to do with that cruise ship because um, this was a woman, she was diagnosed with pneumonia, hospitalized since February 1st. So 13 days ago or 12 days ago, depending on how you count, added her breathing deteriorated on February 6th. So notice hospitalized, fully symptomatic. Five days later, the breathing starts to deteriorate. That's when the lung damage begins to set in. She was the mother-in-law of a Tokyo taxi driver who tested positive for COVID-19 on Thursday. So this is a taxi driver. He was quoted as saying that he had not transported foreign visitors in the two weeks before he first showed symptoms on January 29th. Again, that's why this is such a beast of a virus is its long incubation period, that long latency period between exposure and being symptomatic. So he showed symptoms on January 29th. What's interesting is mother-in-law shows up on February 1st. That's just two days away. Um, so uh, she either got it in record time or he was spreading it to her asymptomatically, which is actually what this data seems to suggest right here because that's a little fast. Uh, the incubation period seems to be a minimum of five to seven days. So my best guess, he got it, was asymptomatic for a long period of time, gave it to his mother-in-law, um, and he showed symptoms on January 29th. She showed him on February 1st, and unfortunately, he has gone on and died. Such an odd time to be alive through all of this because I opened up my Wall Street Journal this morning. I'm tracking all sorts of supply chain disruptions and logistics disruptions that are happening all across the business world right now. Just massive from the pharmaceutical industry, uh, of course, the cruise airline industries, uh, the jet fuel processing. So that means the oil industries and on and on and on. It's just a huge, gigantic mess. And I call this an odd time because this is the preeminent business journal of the United States. And this, everything above the fold, should be the stuff that's most important. And you would think a global supply chain disruption that's never been experienced before would kind of make it above the fold, possibly as a point of interest for a, a business journal. So uh, there's really no good way to explain this except to say they're purposely leaving it off the front. And I get why. We'll get to that in a minute. I understand, I think, the game they're playing. But, you know, is this really the most important thing? Uh, yes, I think it's, it's important. But is it more important than a once in a generation or maybe once in forever uh, supply chain disruption? I, I think not. All right. Moving on. Uh, a couple of you sent this to me. I've been reading this for a couple of days, trying to make sense of it. It came out uh, two days ago, but now we're going to talk about it here. And this is from a Los Alamos study. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good outfit right there. A lot of uh, very, very intelligent people work there. And this is uh, the title of this. The novel coronavirus 219, 2019 NCOV is highly contagious and more infectious than initially Estimated. Now, we had a pretty high initial estimate, so let's take a look at what they've got here. They came up with an R0 of 4.7 to 6.6 exclamation point. Oh, my God. Uh, this would explain and fit with a lot of the data we're seeing out of the cruise ship, out of the Hong Kong uh, apartment building where this virus is uh, very quietly and stealthily moving up and down pipes or gosh only knows how it's moving around. So... Um, the initial R0, or reproductive number, was estimated to be 2.2 to 2.7. Here, 
They say we provide a new estimate of this quantity. They collected extensive individual case reports, estimated key epidemiology parameters, including the incubation period. And going through all of this work, um, the, here's the punchline. Um, early, we estimated that the number of infected individuals during early epidemic double every 2.4 days. So that 14,000 boost in cases uh, we saw yesterday, uh-uh. What they're saying is that every 2.4 days, you're going to see the number double. So it would go from 20,000 2.4 days later, it's 40,000 2.4 days later, it's 80,000 2.4 days later, it's 160,000. That's what that means. And that the r naught value is likely to be between 4.7 and 6.6. Oh my gosh, there's just there's no stopping this. That is an unstoppable pandemic with numbers like that, I believe. We further show that quarantine and contact tracing of symptomatic individuals alone may not be effective. Of course not, because symptomatic doesn't count when you've got an incubation period like this, where you're transferring it asymptomatically, and early strong control measures are needed to stop the transmission of the virus. This is the truth, people. This is what's coming, and it's going to come to a neighborhood near you at some point, uh, and, and it's going to really disrupt life. Because we have to talk about why that is. How do you stop a contagion like this? Well, first up, back on February 9th update in this video series, I said the only way to actually drop the r naught below 1 is to do exactly what China is doing. And if you can drop the r naught below 1, meaning that on average, each infected person, asymptomatic or symptomatic, through the whole duration of the time they are capable of transmitting this virus, during that whole period, they would on average transmit it to less than one other person. To get an R0 below 1 is how you stop a pandemic, stop a contagion. This is just what happens, right? Um, and so to do that, you have to do the things we see China actually doing. Severe social distancing, severe isolation, quarantines, all of that stuff. But here's the important part. R0 is not an intrinsic number that a virus has. Yet, Yes, it's true. Some viruses spread more easily than others. Absolutely, right? The ones that go by aerosol spread more easily than one that go by droplets and so on. Um, and of course, that contributes to the possibility of having a very high R0. So that this coronavirus, COVID-19, has that a very high R0 because it spreads really easily. But, but getting that R0 to move up or down, really the rest depends on how people respond. So what do you do? Well, ways to stop the spread and drop the R0, hopefully below one, include frequent hand washing, social distancing, self-quarantine, official quarantine. These are the sorts of things that you need to do in order to stop a contagion. So now we're going to continue back to that Los Alamos paper with that background, understanding that R0 is, is a is a overall number that speaks to both the infectivity of a particular virus plus how people respond and, and what we do officially and privately uh, to help stop that spread. This is the explosive conclusion of this paper. It's it's hidden way down here in a line. So let me pull it out for you. All right. Um, do, 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 do. I'll start here. Um, what they said was that with everything that had been done in Wuhan, right? So, so due to the closure of Wuhan and other cities, right, they did all kinds of things, right? Quarantines and, and the streets look like ghost cities and all of that. With everything that Wuhan has done, which is really, really fairly draconian by any, by any measure. Everything they've done suggests that what happened here was translated to 50 to 59% decrease in R0 to between 2.3 and 3.0. So didn't get it below one. They estimated in the study that with everything that was done, including not seeing a soul on the streets, all that did was help drop the R0 to between 2.3 and three. That's an explosive conclusion. It means that you have to go even further than this to stop it. And if you're not willing to go further, then shutting your entire city structure down, shutting your entire economy down, and doing it for up to at least a month with no additional cases, because this thing has an incubation period that might be 24 days or more longer. We don't know that the data is, is really odd about this. If you're not willing to do that, this thing is just going to spread, right? So, um, thus, the reduction in growth rate may reflect the impact of vigorous control measures implemented and individual behavior changes in China during the course of the outbreak. That's great. 
Um, but uh, it still wasn't enough to drop it below one. So this thing is going to continue to spread. So now we're going to update our not the flu and not SARS uh, checklist here to include these new two elements here in yellow, a very high R0, way over three based on this paper, maybe as high as 6.7. Uh, this is going to be very, very difficult to contain this. In fact, I would submit to you that official efforts to try and contain it are pretty much... Um, uh, that cat's already out of the bag, and and many uh, infectious disease specialists have already said as much. Again, these economic impacts are really just starting to ripple all over the place. Uh, at peak prosperity, we have this daily digest that we uh, put up every day. And in uh, the most recent daily digest, we see this story, Nissan to shut a Japan factory due to shortage of Chinese parts, and that China's firms face grim reality as help from Beijing could take too long to trickle down. A uh, lot of economic impacts coming, and I'm tracking just dozens and dozens of these. Uh, these are coming. And of course, if you can't stop a pandemic, what is a government to do? Well, it's going to try and limit the economic and social impacts. And uh, I get it. I totally get that from a macro perspective. Uh, as well, I understand this from my own perspective and your perspective, and that there are things we can do at our level, the micro level, to uh, change the outcome of this for ourselves and our loved ones. That's why I'm putting these videos out, so that you have the information to make the decisions you're going to make. And by the way, this weekend, uh, Saturday, we are going to be having a, uh, a live um, Zoom video call with people who uh, at my website, with our subscribers, to go over any questions they have. We're going to be covering a lot of different questions about that, um, you know, things like why are so few people outside of China seemingly uh, not getting this at this point in time? Uh, what might happen next? What are some ways that people can protect themselves? So if you want to come by Peak Prosperity, check that out. We've got a place to register for that uh, right on the front page above the fold if you want to have a live Q&A and uh, interact with us around this material. So conclusions from today. Even the most draconian of possible containment measures, such as we saw in Wuhan, are estimated to have only reduced the R0 to somewhere between 2 and 3. Uh, that means this is, as far as I'm concerned, all but uncontainable in a modern world with cities running as they do. Second, we need the derivative conclusion from that quarantines really can only last so long before people, they're hungry or they're just too bored. They begin to move about. They spread the disease anew. And governments on their side can only enforce a quarantine for so long before they cave in and order people back to work because a disease spreading gives you one outcome, but if the economy collapses, you get a completely different outcome. When you weigh the two of those, I really understand why keeping the economy going becomes a larger concern uh, if you're just running the numbers, and, and that's just a reality of it. Media is obviously being very silent on the virus because um, I think they're in service to the macro game, which we totally understand, quite sympathetic to it. We, we understand the law of numbers and what's being done there. But we don't see it as an either-or situation. We see it as an and. We think that uh, it's possible to run a macro story and for private individuals to become prepared. In fact, we think it's the responsible thing to do. So final conclusion is your responsibility is to the micro game, right? Which means taking care of you and yours as best you can. And we think these complement each other, that there are things that... The authorities need to do. There are things that we need to do that, in fact, one is a fractal of the other, and we believe in both. So we're talking to you because we believe that you have to uh, have the information so you can make whatever decisions make the most sense to you, and we trust you to be intelligent, listen to this data, and make of it what you will, trust yourself, and ultimately come to the best decisions for you and your family. So with that, thank you for listening. Please, everybody, take care and good luck.